You are listening to a message recorded at Summer Strand United Church. For more information, visit our Facebook page. Our first reading today is from Psalm 46. Won't you turn with me there in your Bibles? From verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake and they're surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease and the, and the ends, to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. And then this lovely verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among, among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And then friends, across into the New Testament, John chapter 12. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. This is the Word of God. May the Lord add His blessing to this reading of His Holy Word. Father, we pray that uh, Your love would touch us once again, as in these troubled times, Father, we are aware of Your grace and Your mercy, Your love, and the truth of Your Word, the subjective, wonderful truth in a world that is struggling, in a world that is sick, in a world that is struggling to find its true north. Help us, Lord, in these troubled times. Help us to see you, help us to hear you, help us especially to follow the voice of the Good Shepherd. In Jesus' name, Amen. So friends, the title of the message this morning, the sermon this morning, is called COVID-19, An Opportunity to Reorder Life. So some realities then from headlines around the world. Here's the first one. Campus chaos. International students navigate COVID-19. Chaos confusion at Manila Airport after COVID-19 policy. A&E doctors warn of carnage and chaos in UK hospitals amid, and the headline continues. Coronavirus testing chaos across America. And then right here in South Africa. Coronavirus SA commuters fear infection in overcrowded taxis. In the middle of all this, friends, is the reality, as the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 14, 33, For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. This was an instruction from Paul to the Corinthian church to get back into their chaotic, to get order back into the, their chaotic services. God's universe is well ordered. It functions well. There's day, night, stars, sun, moon, seasons. Psalm 104 verse 19, he made the moon to mark the seasons and the sun knows when to go down. Friends, God's universe is well ordered. In the middle of the struggle, of the chaos, of some of the stuff that's going on around the world and perhaps even in your, in your own heart, the, the disorder you feel, God's universe is well ordered. God is, a, is not a, a God of disorder, but of peace. And so in the middle of all of this, there's this amazing reality. There's Perhaps some unique opportunities that come to us because of COVID-19, despite uh, the the ill health and the vulnerable, and and our hearts are with those. Our hearts are with those who are struggling, the sick and the lonely and the isolated, and especially the vulnerable, the aged, or those who have underlying illnesses. But in the middle of that, um, there are perhaps two uh, opportunities that emerge from this text because of COVID-19. And so the first title I would like to share is that uh, this, there's, a, there's an opportunity to get worship back to where it belongs. 
an opportunity to get worship back to where it belonged. The text says that it was six days after the Passover and in Bethany. And this is a little town where Lazarus lived and there's a meal being given in Jesus' honor. Most likely they're celebrating the reality of Lazarus' resurrection, that he came alive. And Martha served and Lazarus was reclining at the table. And Mary takes this pint, about a half liter of pure nard, and uh, pours it out on Jesus' feet. And so friends, as noble as each of these activities, Mary, uh, Martha's and Lazarus's, are, which is the most important? And clearly the text says to us that Mary's was the most important. Martha served, that's important. She served the guests. Lazarus shared his story, reclining around that table. What a story it was. He'd been dead a couple of days and he came alive. But Mary worshipped. She engaged in true worship. And so we see this priority of worship. We're talking about getting worship back to where it belongs. Let's look at it quickly. So it's pure and expensive nod. It was costly worship. Perhaps a whole year of, of a workman's wages was the value of that perfume. She poured it out on Jesus' feet. It was positional worship. It was done during the meal. So um, she gets up and she comes to sit at Jesus' feet. It, it was humble worship. Um, she, she positioned herself at his feet. And she wiped her feet with her hair, which was very rare for a Jewish woman to let down her hair in public. Loose hair indicated loose morals. And so Mary is unashamed and she is moved to emotion. She's moved to worship. She's moved to a true sense of being a daughter of the living God. And so she sits at his feet. The sacrificial act of worship, of costly worship. And the house was filled with this beautiful fragrance. There's an invisible consequence. You see, friends, it's possible to be involved in many good things, but not the most important thing. So perhaps COVID-19 will give us the opportunity to reorder our lives around true worship, to bring it back to where it belongs. In our homes. This beautiful act of worship took place in a home. All three, Martha, Lazarus, Mary, were delighted and grateful to have Jesus in their homes. And so friends, as we consider reordering our lives in this season of self-isolation, even as you listen to this, here I am in our auditorium, and we're recording this, but I'm Stoxy Lalian. And that's the reality of, of responsible faith, self-isolation for the love of our brother and sister, for the love of God. It's an act of, uh, act of faith uh, to self-isolate, that God will do his amazing work as we are responsible um, in social distancing, etc. And friends, now that the sport around the world, sport which we often worship, let's be honest, sports people. We're almost back in the Greek era where the body is worshipped. And even on the Sabbath, which has just become a normal day, regular Sunday around the world has become a normal day of the week where sport happens normally in full, you know, full force. The world has become quiet and especially quiet on the Sabbath. So what opportunity does that offer you and I, friends? To bring worship back into our homes. Perhaps you're even listening to this with your family or your friends. Maybe even unbelievers. It's an opportunity to, to reach out even in our homes. Costly, sacrificial. Yes, we'd love to meet in public places as we've always done. But here's a unique opportunity to get worship back to where it belongs. In our homes. The text goes on. But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, we're in verse 4, John chapter 12. But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. This unsavory part of the story stands in strong contrast to the uninhibited beauty of the first part. So friends, the second opportunity COVID-19 is offering us is to check the condition of our hearts. To check the condition of our hearts. But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, he interjects. 
There's this beautiful reality of worship that is taking place. But Judah stands up and makes an objection. Things were orderly. Things were respectful. Things were worshipful. The community gathered around the table, was grateful for what Jesus had done and what he was doing. And then Jesus, uh, sorry, and then Judah speaks up. His mouth spoke of what was hidden in his heart, friends. A guy called Trench who commentates on this text. He says this verb to bear or to, to take, or here translated as, as, as keeper, keeper of the purse or keeper of the money bag, is in the imperfect tense, showing that he habitually carried the money bag and he habitually carried from it. So in other words, he, he carried you know, the, the purse, the treasury bag, but he also reached in and carried money out of it. So friends, was, was Judas's real concern for the financial um, misuse of the potential sale value of the perfume? Was it, was it real? No. It was all a charade, an act, a veneer of holiness. Judas's words could have been so different. He could have added to the sense of thankfulness and worship of the occasion. Instead, he chose self-centeredness. His words were a consequence of his lifestyle of helping himself. Judas had a very low sense of self-awareness. He did not realize what was hidden in his heart. Jesus, of course, knew. The disciples hadn't you know, come, come to see this yet, what was going on. But Jesus knew, and Jesus knows, friends, what is going on in your heart and mine. So COVID-19 is this opportunity to check the condition of our hearts. Imagine if Judas had followed the instruction of the psalm we read today. To be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46 verse 10. Imagine how different his life would have been. If he'd had some deep self-reflection and seen the content of his heart. Another commentator, Trapp, says it was probably through greed and discontent that the devil gained a foothold in Judas' life. He goes on to say, take heed of discontent. It was the devil's sin that threw him out of heaven. Ever since which this restless spirit loves to fish in troubled waters. Take heed of discontent. Can we do that, friends, in this season of self-isolation as we check the condition of our hearts? Be still. The whole globe is being forced to be still. We're being forced to take time to reflect. Well, you know, we can fill our time up with everything else. Uh, we were chatting to our, our son Andrew um, in Stellenbosch yesterday, and he was telling us that it seems like in Europe the, the internet is, <clears throat> is really battening. It, it might even crash as a result of people going into self-isolation, but not necessarily being quiet before God. They're just going online and doing more stuff, listening to more stuff, downloading more stuff. In many ways, friends, that's not taking this opportunity seriously to be still and know that he is God we can determine to improve our heart condition let's determine we can have better hearts when this coronavirus is over as we allow our restless spirits to find rest in God how do we overcome self-centered greed I mean we're self-centered people I acknowledge sometimes I I want more than I than I should have well we be generous toward God and others without telling anyone the secret of giving to make sure we don't become greedy or we at least become less greedy and less self-centered. Let's take time to reorder our hearts and find peace. That text from Corinthians said to us, For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. It's been fascinating to hear what's been happening in Venice. I'm not sure if you've heard, but uh, a business tech traveler called Hannah Bradler, two days ago, she posted, Venice has long been suffering from over-tourism. COVID-19 has changed that. After Italy made a nationwide lockdown, formerly busy streets and canals have fallen quiet. Usually clouded, murky, and polluted by diesel-powered commuter boats and water buses. These are the canals of Venice. Residents have posted images of wildlife returning to the canals, which include shoals of fish and swans. Isn't that amazing, friends? As we be still and know that He is God. 
We may indeed find healing for our hearts, healing for our souls. The land itself might find healing. Cities and towns that grow quiet might find healing. As we do what is responsible and allow God to do His amazing work. But the text does offer us perhaps three specific areas around the condition of our hearts. Verse 7. Jesus says, leave her alone. This is after the rebuke by Judas to Mary. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the pure and poor among you, but you will not always have me. You see, friends, hearts that are at peace, they speak up at the right time for the right reason. Hearts that are at peace, they speak up at the right time for the right reason. Jesus came, came to Mary's defense. Where Judas was extreme in his selfishness, Mary was extreme in her love. Through her act of unselfish worship, Judas tried to put a price on Mary's love for Jesus. Isn't that shocking, friends? Therefore, Jesus spoke up. You can't put a price on costly worship, can you? Mark 14 verse 9 says, Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. So McLaren, another commentator, says, The evangelist who records that promise does not mention Mary's name. John. Sorry. But John, the other gospel writer, who does mention the name, does not record the promise. It matters little whether our names are remembered, so long as Jesus bears, bears them graven on his heart. That's true worship, isn't it? And a heart at peace speaks up at the right time for the right reason. Verse 9 in John 12. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. So not only were the chief priests out to kill Jesus, but they're also out to kill Lazarus. Why would that be? Well, the chief priests were mostly Sadducees. And the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection. Lazarus was a living example of life after death. He'd been dead in a cave, put there, covered in grave clothes. And Jesus had walked in. Um, and he certainly was dead. He'd been you know, dead for a while. Jesus walks into that cave and with those grave, grave clothes falling off him, Lazarus comes out. So Lazarus was a living example of life after death. And having him around was an embarrassment to their theological system. That's the Sadducees. For them, there was only one solution to this embarrassing problem. To put Lazarus to death. This is what David Guzik writes. About the chief priests and the Sadducees. Imagine, friends, if this event had changed the minds of the Sadducees. Imagine it, instead of... You know, trying to condemn Jesus and condemn Lazarus, put him to death because he was a walking reality of the resurrection. This is a foretaste of the resurrection. Mary understood it, you know, with her sacrificial costly worship, this her nod representing the burial perfume that would come later. And Lazarus certainly understood it. He knew what it was like to be dead. He knew what it was like to be alive. Imagine if the Sadducees had started celebrating instead of seeking a way to kill. So hearts at peace overcome unbelief, friends. Not only do they speak up, but they overcome unbelief. And the Sadducees, as good people as they were, as religious as they were in so many ways, they had this unbelief about the resurrection. And believing in the historical event of the death and resurrection, friends, defines who we are as Christians. And so won't, won't you do a heart check about this beautiful reality in the belief of the, of the resurrection. And whatever we face, we will be resurrected. And those, sadly, who have died around the world due to COVID-19, those 
believers in Christ will be resurrected. And that is worth praising and saying hallelujah and glory to God and who He is. And so hearts at peace speak up. Hearts at peace that are well ordered, overcome unbelief. And then verse 11. For on account of Him, that's Lazarus, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in Him. This magnificent miracle leads to faith, friends. And hearts at peace, they, they save the lost. They seek and save the lost. And Lazarus' testimony was resulting in many Jews coming to faith. For on account of him, these large crowds of Jews that were there, that had seen this miracle and heard about it, just amazed to see this living Lazarus. They were believing in Jesus. So Lazarus had a story of salvation to share, and he did so, friends. The story did not put Lazarus at the center, but rather Jesus. That's what a good testimony does, doesn't it? And many believed in Jesus. Many were saved. COVID-19 will offer us unique opportunities to share the love of Jesus. Even though we're in self-isolation, friends, we are still able to have some unique one-on-one -on -one conversations, be they online or be they with your family or be with, they with close friends, whoever you might be with uh, during the season of isolation, during this season of COVID-19. And it is a season, friends. It will come to an end in God's perfect timing. So my lovely wife, Shirley, was down at um, the shopping center the other day and went into one of the shops and coming out of the shops going to the till there was a, a checkout lady there and she was perhaps 30 to 40 years of age and clearly she was unhappy in that she had you know had had to come to be at work and she was aware of the risk she was facing with these people coming in close proximity to her breathing and talking and chatting as they go you know past her till and give her things that they've touched and she's got to touch this reality of risk around her right here at this till and she didn't look happy and Shulz could see that and so um, she spoke with her and sought to encourage her and, you know asked her you know are you are you are you struggling and she said yes I am you know I'm, I'm not happy to be here this is a struggle for me and Shulz encouraged her and it, and encouraged her that, that, um, to pray and ask Jesus to protect her. Encourage her by saying that you know, most people are surviving from this illness. There are very few that, that, are, that are dying relative to you know, normal flu, etc. And so she was able to encourage this woman. And, and the lady said thank you to her. Thank you for caring. Thank you for reaching out to me in my situation. And so, friends, COVID-19, yes, has brought a lot of trouble and a lot of struggle. But COVID-19 is also offering us some unique opportunities. And even though there is chaos and fear, perhaps even welling up in our hearts, could we remember the Bible says, For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this unique opportunity to worship. Even though, Father, we are not face to face right here today, we know your presence is with us. For where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are. And so if you're in your home, if you're on your own, if you're in your car or wherever you may be, may you experience his grace. If it's just you and God the Father, God the Son and the Holy Spirit, may you experience his peace. If it's you and your family listening to this, may you consider this an opportunity for reordering life, for getting worship back to where it belongs in our homes. Is worship the top priority in your home, friends? Is, is the Bible, are the scriptures in their rightful place in your home? Are you taking time to read and pray through the scriptures in your home? Are you committing yourself to to, to rising early and spending time with God or, or going for a walk with God and listening and praying? Are you taking time, friends, as we're, we're perhaps working at home or, or, or if you're still going to work, whatever your circumstances may be, um, to listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd? 
And then let's be honest, friends, that our hearts need checking regularly. Just as you go for physical checkups, our, our, our hearts need checking up regularly. And so, Father, as we quiet before you, won't you speak to us about the condition of our hearts? Are we unashamed of the gospel? Are we prepared to speak up for others at the right time for the right reason? Or have we become self-centered and just concerned with self-preservation? Has unbelief crept into your heart, friends, like it had for the Sadducees? Is this a season to believe again in the firm foundation of the gospel and the death and resurrection of Jesus? Has self-preservation deep in our hearts, perhaps given us a lack of love for the lost? We certainly can pray for the lost during this season, can't we? We can pray for our nation, we can pray for our leaders. We can believe that we're going to be a better nation and a better people after when COVID is over. We can be, believe that we're going to have a better heart of love full of Christ's love for the broken world when COVID is done by praying and interceding for the lost and those who don't know him yet. For on account of him, Lazarus, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. And so, Father, we pray that you would fill us with a heart of love for you and for our neighbor and for the lost. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening to this week's message by Summerstrand United Church. For more information, visit us online at summerstrandunited.co.za.